Mirrors and mirrors. Okay, so this is an example of a portal. So we can see what's going on in the quad room, but obviously you can walk behind here. And in this case, we can actually jump through it. Portals and mirrors are basically the same thing for us. The only difference between the two is what they're actually you know, rendering, but they're handled identically. Um, so yeah, it's the location of the virtual viewpoint. In this case, the designers have gone through and placed like a virtual camera looking at the, where the stairs were by the red armor and the volumetric fog, looking into the quad room. If this was just a mirror, what would happen is we just mirror the view position behind it, render the world as it would see. So that's the only real difference. The only trick there is since we sample the PVS from where you are, in the case of a mirror, you have to make sure that the, the mirrored point, if it ends up outside the world, doesn't do bad things. So what we do is we attach to the mirror a PVS sample so that when we're doing the mirror view, we just suck the PVS from the mirror as opposed to trying to suck it from, say, the wall. Uh, in this particular case, yeah, it, that would actually happen if that was, in fact, a mirror. You would, uh, you would see the, the whole world would end up being rendered because if there's no PVS, we just draw everything. So they would have had to put a PVS sample point at the mirror so that when the mirroring, mirroring was actually occurring, you would actually see the right thing. We only allow a single portal or mirror to be visible at once. Um, it's not some technology thing. It's not like a difficult thing to solve, but you can, you can and will get infinite recursion. And solving that's just sort of a hack, so we'd rather take a more elegant hack, which is only allowing one at a time. <clears throat> so the whole trick here is we render the whole world from the mirror or portal's point of view using a user clip plane to clip off pieces behind the mirror. So if, if you have a mirror and you're mirroring the viewpoint behind the mirror, you don't want to actually see all the stuff that's behind the mirror. You want to sort of like see it from the mirror's point of view, but you don't want to see the back of the mirror or the armor sitting behind the mirror or anything like that. So we use an OpenGL user clip plane in order to achieve that. So then the frame buffer is basically filled with the scene as rendered from the mirror's point of view. Then we go through and just clear the depth buffer. Color buffer stays the same, so we still have the mirror's point of view. Then the next thing is we go back and we render from the user's point of view, the, the player's point of view, just the surface that describes the mirror's surface. We stencil in the depth buffer values at that point so that that will sort of stay there in space or actually be you know, depth buffered correctly. Then we just re-render the whole world. So what ends up happening is if, if we were to be able to see this in multiple steps, you would see actually the whole part of, I mean, where the viewpoint is for this portal. You, it would actually render the whole scene there first, clear the depth buffer, then we go through and just stencil out that part, and then we go through and render the rest of the world. And it just magically works. It's really nice. So we stencil it without using the stencil buffer. We simply stencil it by drawing it first, clearing the Z buffer, and then putting in correct Z values for the new viewpoint. 